Good day to you all, comrades and friends. This is Global Weekly News, serial number twenty. People's Dispatch <coughs> and Globe Trotter together present a podcast every week on Friday at eight thirty p.m. Indian time. On fourth November, hundredth episode was celebrated as one hour special show. by vijay prasad prasad and joy alexandra the international journalist at the end of the episode the podcast of mine given in ca2 tamil nadu facebook every week in tamil was appreciated <coughs> comrades and friends <coughs> the first item today we are going to see about elections in israel Elections in Israel's parliament took place five times in a span of three and a half years. Since 2015, on 1st November, elections, 71 percent people voted, the highest since 2015. At the end of 2018, Netanyahu-led government lost its majority in the elections held. Since 2019 April, no party or coalition got the majority. Elections were held on September 2019, March 2020, and March 2021. On June 2021, the unusual coalition of far right, centrist, and Arab Muslim party defeated Netanyahu. Participation of Arab Muslim party in the alliance had raised hopes among the Palestinians, but the coalition Bennett Lapid government followed the same anti-Palestinian policies. In the recent elections on 1st November of this year, again the far-right coalition led by ben- Benjamin Netanyahu got the majority. In the 120 member parliament, this coalition got 65 seats. The overtly racist and anti-Palestinian religious Zionism list, that is, movement for Jewish homeland, is set to become the third largest party in the Israeli parliament and part of the new government. The incumbent coalition led by Yar Lapid, Lapid is expected to win 50 seats only. The left-wing party, which had six seats in the last elections, could not get any seat this time. The movement for Jewish homeland got seven more seats than the previous seven seats. Totally 14 seats now it has got. Growing popularity of fascism. and apartheid policies are revealed in the election results israeli judiciary and police face or police force are made as subordinates to elected representatives the zionist movement insists on the withdrawal of corruption cases against netanyahu the new nation israel was formed in 1948 by occupying palestinian areas like west bank gaza strip etc the palestinians in the occupied territories are undergoing tremendous torture and they don't have any human rights they do not enjoy human rights also netanyahu bombed gaza strip in 2021 This year, 2022, is the worst year for the Palestinians because more number of Palestinians were killed this year and more number of Palestinians were put in jail. The Al-Aqsa Mosque was attacked. The U.S.-born journalist Akhle was shot at by Israeli security forces. Palestinians face many hurdles even while reporting for duty. they could not avail proper medical treatment during the covid-19 period israeli security forces encircled the city of jenin where in tens of thousands of palestinians lived 
and attack them. Palestinians show up resistance consistently and vehemently, that is strongly. Whether Trump or Biden becomes the president of USA, US supports Israel's apartheid and anarchic policies and activities. The recently won Netanyahu-led alliance will definitely follow most reactionary terrorist apartheid policies against Palestinians. Palestinians at this juncture are in need of more and more international solidarity. Comrades and friends, let us go to Brazil where elections took place. On 30th October, the second round of elections took place in Brazil for the post of president. Lula da Silva of the Workers' Party got 50.9% votes and elected as the new president. Thousands of people conducted rallies hailing the victory of Lula. In the past six years, up to the removal of Dilma Rousseff government, people's lives and livelihoods got deteriorated. They hoped for a progressive change from the Lula government. Lula got 60 million votes. His opponent, Jair Bolsonaro, got 58 million votes. So the difference is just 2 million, that is 20 lakh votes only. It was a neck and neck race. Lula could get more votes in the north and northeastern regions where Afro Brazilians and indigenous people uh, en masse voted for Lula. In the southern region, Bolsonaro could poll more votes. Richer sections of people voted for Bolsonaro and the poor people voted for Lula. Votes got split on class lines. Majority of the evangelists voted for Bolsonaro. Lula was the former president of Brazil from 2003 to 2010. He will be sworn in as the new president on 1st January 2023. He was born in 1945. At young age, he worked in an automobile company. At the age of 19, he lost his two fingers in an industrial accident. Military dictatorship was there in Brazil from 1964 to 1985. Lula helped in the formation of workers' movement and democratic movement. He formed the Workers' Party, PT, along with the leftist groups in 1980. Trade unions and the landless workers' movement, they too joined the workers' party. The large-scale campaign by the party could bring about an end to the dictatorial rule. In 1986, Lula was elected to the parliament with the highest number of votes. Under Lula's presidency between 2003 to 2010 and Dilma Rousseff, uh, his successors, presidency up to 2016. Many initiatives were taken by the government to eradicate poverty, hunger, illiteracy, homelessness, etc. Lula got an award from the United Nations in 2010 for abolishing absolute poverty in Brazil. State universities were established. State funds were utilized for Strengthening country's infrastructure, growth rate increased, social inequality declined. Government built houses for the homeless. The achievements of Lula and Dilma governments stopped since 2016. During the rightist government since 2016, over the past period of six years, number of people suffering from Food insecurity got doubled. By December 2020, half the Brazilian population were pushed to hunger. Lula has now promised to go for rapid industrialization and development of modern high-tech industries. In the parliament, the rightist parties have a majority and they will put hurdles in implementation of pro-people measures. Lula will try to protect Amazon rainforest. He will not allow deforestation for the profit of corporates and rich agriculturists. 
eighty percent staff in the foreign ministry. They have welcomed Lula's victory. Lula will act against the Cold War of U.S. against China. He will try to bring about peace between Russia and the West. He will be using his diplomatic skills. Brazil will be a member, already a member in the UN Security Council till December 2023. This will help Lula in his international task. Lula was instrumental in the formation of BRICS: B for Brazil, R for Russia, I for India, C for China, and S for South Africa. Between 2008 and 2010. Lula helped the formation of SIDAC, Community of Latin American and Caribbean States. Monroe Doctrine was mooted in the year 1823, 200 years back. As per this Monroe Doctrine, United States was supposed to be the defender of the world. This doctrine has not brought peace in the world. It has created wars and the regional conflicts. Lula is dead against Monroe doctrine therefore Brazil and the world has to rejoice rejoice the victory of Lula comrades and friends let us go to Cuba <coughs> the third item today united nations votes against the sanctions on Cuba socialist revolution took place in Cuba in 1959 fidel castro Let the socialist stay. United States had imposed sanctions on Cuba since 1962. A resolution to remove these restrictions was passed with a huge majority <coughs> in the United Nations in 1992. Since 1992, every year such a resolution for withdrawal of U.S. sanctions on Cuba uh, had been passed. With the exception of COVID year 2020, U.S. government speaks so much on democracy and human rights in other countries, but United States is not at all bothered to about the verdict uh, about, about the verdict in the United Nations. It is not giving any credit to the United Nations democratic verdict against its sanctions on Cuba. Every year in the United Nations, at the time of voting on sanctions of uh, United States against Cuba, the Foreign Minister of Cuba and many important leaders from uh, all over the world, they will come and they will speak. United States spokesperson will defend U.S. sanctions. These sanctions are not approved by the Security Council. These are illegal and against. the us un charter united nations charter in united nations general assembly voting on 3rd november of this year uh, took place 185 nations supported the resolution for withdrawal of us sanctions on cuba bolsonaro of brazil and ukraine abstained united states and israel only these two countries voted against the resolution that is they want us sanctions to continue due to us sanctions not only the foreign trade of cuba was affected but also cuba could not get international humanitarian aid also the cuba's foreign minister said in the united nations more than 80% of the cuban population were born in the 60 years of economic sanctions period the sanctions are genocidal policy due to the sanctions in the past 30 years cuban economic loss is 1.391 trillion dollars in rupee terms it is 115 lakh crores of rupees even though world over there is a growth in condemning usa for its sanctions illegal sanctions on cuba donald trump the former us president imposed new 243 sanction measures joe biden the current president though in his election campaign promised to withdraw he is following the same anti cuban policy pro cuban activists 
conducted rally in New York City. In that rally, People's Forum representative said, United States is encouraging terrorism and is responsible for the fall of many elected governments. Anybody calling U.S. as a terrorist country? But U.S. has placed Cuba in the list of states sponsoring terrorism. Rodney Hunter, United Nations Envoy of U.S. has defended the list saying that this is to develop democracy and the human rights in Cuba. What a hypocrisy. Cuba was affected very much due to the Delta variant of COVID-19 in August 2021. At that time, its only oxygen plant could not function. Cuba was not able to import the necessary spare parts of the plant due to US sanctions. When COVID-19 was at its peak in 2020, an Asian ship of solidarity materials to Cuba was prevented from entering the Cuban waters. At the time of <coughs> Matangas Cuban oil tanker fire, at the time of Yin hurricane in Cuba, US did not render any assistance to Cuba. Despite economic setback in Cuba due to US sanctions, only 8,530 Cuban people died due to COVID-19, whereas more than 1 million people lost their lives in the United States of America. Due to Florida hurricane in the US, 100 people died, whereas due to Yin hurricane in Cuba, only 3 people died. Cuba is following people-centered progressive policies. US attempted to kill Fidel Castro, made attempts 200 times, but could not succeed. And uh, Bay, Bay of Pigs was invaded by US mercenaries. Bombs were placed in Cuban airlines and the plane caught fire in the mid air. In 2016, at the intervention of Cuba, Colombia peace accord was reached between the government and the rebels. Because of this accord between Colombian government and the rebels, elections could take place now. Gustavo Petro became president, Francia Marquis became the vice president. Trump said, due to such Cuban intervention, Cuba was placed in the list of states sponsoring terrorism. Cuba did not send any army weapons to any other country. Cuba sent its medical teams to many countries. Cuba should have been given Nobel Prize. Comrades and friends, let us go to the Conference of the Parties 27, Global Climate Conference at Egypt. In Cairo, in Cairo, the capital of Egypt, a world conference on climate change is being held now. COP27, Conference of Parties, will continue, continue up to 18th November. Compared to the pre-industrial period, World average temperature, old average temperature has gone up by 1.5 degrees centigrade. The capitalist overproduction and emission of green gases like carbon dioxide led to the increase in world temperature. Even the countries emitting far less green gases have to face the worst sudden changes in climate and catastrophic hurricanes, floods, droughts forest fires, etc. The advanced countries promise to fund the advancement of new technology and green energy in the developing countries. But promises are not kept up. Capitalism means continuation of conflicts and wars. If the world is able to divert the funds of defense production to meet challenges due to climate change, the world will be saved from climate disasters. If we want war-free world, we will we have to get rid of the capitalist system. As a system, it has failed to deliver. Comrades and friends, fifthly, we go to Colombia and Venezuela, the two 
leftist states in Latin America, they have uh, I mean, renewed relations, mutual relations. Gustavo Petro of Colombia and Nicolas Maduro of Venezuela, both the presidents agreed to establish a new joint corporation cooperation strategy based on the principles of brotherhood, solidarity and complementarity that make the relationship between Colombia and Venezuela more effective. Both of them held their first bilateral meeting in the Venezuelan capital Caracas on 1st November. Relations had been broken in February 2019. Gustavo Petro and Nicolas Maduro signed a joint declaration to further consolidate bilateral relations and mutual cooperation. During their meeting, the two leaders discussed topics relating to commercial and economic alliances and the future steps needed to achieve a full and secure reopening of 2,219 kilometer long common border. The leaders additionally discussed the upcoming COP27 climate summit and a common regional position for Latin America, especially in regard to the protection of Amazon rainforest. They talked about strengthening regional integration organizations such as the community of Latin American and Caribbean states, SALA. It was the first official visit by a Colombian president to Venezuela in almost a decade. The last time a Colombian president had visited Venezuela was in March 2013. Former Colombian president Juan Manuel Santos in the early years of his presidency had gone to Venezuela to attend the massive funeral of Hugo Chavez. <laughs> Lastly, we go to Japan. Comrades and friends, North Korea fired about 100 artillery shells in 27 missiles in a test on 2nd and 3rd November. <coughs> this is in retaliation to the joint military exercises of South Korea and United States. In the last few years, North and South Korea try to develop mutual relations and suspended such military joint exercises. In September of this year, United States, South Korea and Japan conducted joint naval exercises on the borders of China and Russia. They conducted Resolute Dragon 2022. This was United States, Japan along with them there were ships from other countries also. Major General of United States 3rd Div Marine Division said that U.S. is ready to fight and win if called upon. The question is, fight against whom? Perhaps North Korea or China? In November of this year, the armed forces of U.S., Japan, Australia, Canada and United Kingdom conducted joint military exercises. Japanese Prime Minister Fumio Kishida told the Financial Times, we will be fully prepared to respond to any possible scenario in East Asia to protect the lives and livelihoods of our people. For the first time since 2014, Japan is going to produce its national security strategy which will be released in December. Fumio, Fumio Kishida, the Prime Minister of Japan said that US-Japanese security arrangements should be maintained. But Japan is not confident that US will come to the assistance if need be. They remember various instances when US let down its own allies in the cold. Japanese constitution was written in 1947. At that time, the Japanese rulers were pacifists. That is, they did not like war and violence since Japan suffered from Hiroshima and Nagasaki incidents, etc. 
as per article 9 of the constitution japanese self defense forces are prevented from having an aggressive posture no nuclear weapons and so on the chinese revolution took place in 1849 and a war broke out in the korean peninsula in 1950 the right wing prime minister abe tried desperately to revise article 9 public opinion in japan remains against the revision of article 9 it is about 15 to 50 japan's principal trading partner is not america it is china china helps japanese economy afloat and yet japan is putting pressure on china with these military exercises comrades and friends thank you for your patient hearing we will continue next week and next further next weeks thank you comrades